animation is really hard. It takes a lot of time and energy to create even the simplest of animations. Fortunately, there are a plethora of ways artists can express their ideas in this medium. Whether it be something as complex as hand-drawn scenes, or even something as simple as using game sprites. Sprite animation in particular is an interesting case because of its flexibility. Since it's just pixels, it's very easy to replicate Whoa! or modify. That's why back then, flash animations were huge because almost anyone could make their own skits and videos without needing to know how to draw. There's even the added benefit of using characters from well-known games that any viewer might watching might recognize. There's a certain nostalgic charm to it. No, Luigi! I don't sell burgers here! Yes, you do! No, I don't! Really? Yes! Then you can go to hell, Mario! And while I can list on a bunch of games and flash animations I used to watch as a kid, there's one in particular I'd like to talk about today. And it was called... Dan the Man. So, what is Dan the Man? Well, in a nutshell, it's an interesting and fun parody of the arcade game genre. Normally, in those kinds of games, you would go level by level beating bad guys and eventually the final boss before rescuing the princess and winning the game. This story, however, is about the titular character Dan, a hardcore, this can solve any problem if you punch it hard enough kind of guy and his journey to beat the game. However, it's not as simple for him. The world he's in is full of life and character, and stages are beaten through peace, not violence. Something punch-happy Dan struggles to understand throughout the series. The series was made by Joe Brum over at Studio Joho, a relatively small animation studio in Queensland, Australia, with Dan the Man being their first solo project for an original animation. And it was a huge success, with the release of Stage 1 in 2010 garnering over 3 million views in the first few months and the brand new audience wanting more. It took them 3 years but eventually they were able to release not 1, but 6 new stages. On the 7th stage, they teased the upcoming final stage not as an episode, but rather an actual playable game which everyone was excited for. But there was a bit of a problem. Studio Joho were not game designers. Sure, Dan the Man does look like a video game, but animation and game design are fundamentally different processes. One is suffering through keyframes, and the other is suffering through coding. Not to mention, Studio Joho were a small team of six, none of which had any game developing experience beforehand. So, if they wanted to get this game done right, they were going to need some help. Enter Halfbrick Studios, who, funnily enough, were also based in Australia. They are most known for their mobile games, some of which you probably have seen or played before. So, Halfbrick partnered up with Studio Joho to make Dan the Man the game. I will go over the game in detail in another video, as there's a lot to talk about, and since this video is primarily about the series as a whole. But in short, Halfbrick did a great job on the game. Most of the time, it's a lighthearted adventure with lots of laughs. Other times, it balances this out with some serious undertones and themes like domestic abuse and PTSD. There are 8 stages in total, all taking place in an unnamed kingdom where the setting is a mix of the medieval era and the modern age, which I am a really big fan of. From huge fire-breathing dragons, oh no! to the ordinary police officer. West of the kingdom are the modest villagers, who farm and live simple lives in their stone houses. Meanwhile, closer to the castle walls are where the rich and wealthy reside, all of which are heavily guarded by the king's army and a couple of giant robots. And then over here you have Dan, who lives out alone in his treehouse. Dan loves money, he loves to party, and he loves to fight whatever is in his way, no matter how dumb it might be. 
which is pretty accurate considering he's being controlled by the player. I mean, you don't drive on the right side of the roads in GTA because it's fun, do you? In the same manner that Dan sees the world as just a game, the NPCs think of the world as reality. And we can see that perspective through Dan's first companion, Josie. Josie is an NPC who lives in the inn nearby and befriends Dan in stage 2. While she shares Dan's courage and tenacity, she's a bit more compassionate and innocent than Dan, which results in her having a moral compass in stark contrast to Dan who still thinks it's just a game. There's also Dan's two friends, the geezers, who help Dan from time to time. During stages 1 through 5, Dan's adventure seemed like a typical adventure story. Rescue a princess from some rogue ninjas, battle some giant robots, make some new friends, and eventually fight off a big dragon. But eventually it turns into an all out war between Dan and the real antagonist of the game, the advisor. Now, normally a king would be in charge of a kingdom, making sure everything is balanced and fair for all of his subjects. So, what kind of king does Dan's world have? Time to take a piss. What the? Yeah, so the king is basically another Dan who just wants to party, so he leaves all the kingly responsibilities to his advisor. However, the advisor is a big, heartless jerk that controls the kingdom behind his back. The dragon attack from before was because the advisor had kidnapped the dragon's baby to use as steam power for the kingdom. With the ninjas Dan fought from before actually being a group of rebel villagers fighting against the advisor. In the end, they were able to rescue the baby dragon, but with no power source, that left the kingdom with only one option. With the help of the Light Master's rival, the Dark Master, they were successful in capturing villagers for their plans, even capturing Josie later on. This leaves Dan to team up with the rebels and lead the assault in the kingdom to free the villagers and rescue Josie. With the stages now ranging well over the millions in views and the game being a massive success, things were looking up for Dan. The game still gets regular updates with new events being added and the amount of comments asking for a sequel or even a continuation of the main series keeps piling on. But there was a bit of a problem. Dan's story has yet to be finished. Stage 8 was supposed to conclude the series but neither the web series nor the game had a satisfying conclusion. So spoilers ahead but at the end, while events are a bit different, the outcome is about the same. Dan is betrayed by the rebels and everyone dies in the final showdown, causing Dan to reset. The difference being that the game left it ambiguous, with Dan beating up the rebel who betrayed him, and in the web series making it an endless loop of Dan repeatedly going through the entire stage, possibly forever. And that's about it. Nothing else happens after stage 8. And I think the unfortunate truth for this lack of a finale might be from the fact that Studio Joho no longer has a reason to work on Dan the Man, as since then, they've moved on to bigger and better projects. In 2017, they helped animate the pilot for Lion's Blaze by Olin Rogers, who would later go on to make Adult Swim's Final Space a year later. Afterwards, Joe Brum and his team struck a lifetime project with Ludo Studios in the form of the animated show Bluey. Oh yes, right this way please! Finally! Smooth, Romeo! I think it's great that the original team has found success in their careers, but it also might have been the end for Dan. And 5 years would go by, and not a single update, nor any news about a season 2, or even a stage 9 was made. And it seemed that Dan's story would be left unfinished. Or was it? Halfbrick did the unexpected and out of the blue decided to commemorate Dan's 5th anniversary by releasing Stage 9 last year in November, finally ending Dan's looping fate in Stage 8. But that's not all. 
Pathbreak actually reigniting the series again with stages 10, 11, and 12 being made and released one per month this year, along with a new villain faction and storyline. And I'm at a loss for words. While researching this topic last year, I thought that after 5 years of pure silence and no studio Joho, that Dan's story would just be stuck in limbo, but it looks like Dan has a second chance to reclaim his title. As for how this was possible, well, it was because of you. Yes, you. Fans of Dan the Man that helped Dan stay in the limelight. Also because Halfbreak is a pretty cool company that really cares about their IPs and their community. During the making of the script, they promoted a new video from a really dedicated fan who continued to make Dan the Man animations even before its revival. So, in the end, Dan isn't super mainstream like other major video game characters, and I doubt many people know about Dan, but I still think he's pretty unique and special. It was obvious Dan was created from a passionate group of people, and while the creators have taken that passion into newer projects, the legacy of Dan the Man will continue to live on through its fans. As Dan's story hasn't ended, it was just a new life.